chapter's called The Land of Toys. Quite excited about this and it's chapter 13. One afternoon, Silky came to see the children as they were all working hard in the garden. She leaned over the gate and called to them. Hello, I've come to tell you something. Oh, hello, Silky, cried everyone. Come in. We can't stop work because we've got to finish clearing this patch before dinner. Silky came in. She sat down on a bench. The old saucepan man wants to give a party, she said. And he says, will you come? Is it his birthday? asked Joe. Oh, no, he doesn't know when his birthday is, said Silky. He says he hasn't got one. This is just a party, you see. The land of goodies is coming soon, and Saucepan thought it would be a good idea to go there with a large basket and collect as many good things to eat as he can find, and then give a party in Moonface's room, so we can all eat all the lovely things. That sounds great, said Rick, who loved eating good things. When shall we come? Tomorrow, said Silky, about three o'clock. Will that be all right? Oh, yes, said Beth. Mother says we've been very good this week and she's sure to let us come to Saucepan Man's party tomorrow. We'll be there. When's Saucepan Man going to get the goodies? Tomorrow morning, said Silky. He says the land of goodies will be there then. Well, goodbye. I won't stay and talk today as I said I'd make some pop cakes and Google buns for tomorrow as well. I might have to take some toffee shocks too. Silky went. The children talked excitedly about the party. I hope there'll be Danish pastries, said Rick. Danish pastries? At a party? said Beth. Well, why not, said Rick. They're delicious and I hope there'll be pink and yellow ice cream too. Everyone felt excited. When the next afternoon came, Mother said they could go and she wouldn't let them wear their best clothes. Not if you're going to climb trees, she said. And Rick, please don't get your clothes wet this time. If you do... You'll have to stay all day while I dry them. The children ran to the enchanted wood. They had to climb the tree the ordinary way because there was no rope that day. Up they went, shouting a greeting to the owl in his room and to the angry pixie and to Dame Washalot too. They reached Moonface's house. He and Silky were setting out cups and saucers and plates ready for all the goodies that Saucepan was going to bring back. Silky passed a bag round. Have a toffee shock, she said. All the children except Rick had a toffee shock and had had one before. And as long as you knew what the toffee did, it was all right. But if you didn't, it was quite alarming. They encouraged Rick to take one. A toffee shock gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you suck it instead of smaller and smaller and smaller and when it is so big there's no room for it in your mouth it suddenly explodes and goes to nothing joe beth and franny watched rick as he sucked his toffee shop nudging one another giggling rick took a big toffee shock as he was rather a greedy boy he popped it into his mouth and sucked hard it tasted delicious, but it seemed to get bigger and bigger. Rick tried to tell the old who this because it surprised him, but the toffee shock was now so big he could hardly talk. <laughs> he said, what language are you talking, Rick? Asked Moonface with a giggle. Rick looked really alarmed. His toffee was now so enormous that he could hardly find room for it in his mouth. And suddenly, it exploded. And his mouth was empty. Oh, said Rick, opening and shutting his mouth like a goldfish. Oh, I don't, oh, I don't know what to do. Don't you like your toffee? Said Silky, trying not to giggle. Spit it out if you like and have something else. It's gone, said Rick. Then he saw the others laughing and he guessed that toffee shocks were not the usual kind of toffee. He began to laugh too. Gosh, that did frighten me, he said. I'd love to give my old school teacher one of those. Moonface looked at his clock. 
old saucepan man is a long time, he said. It's half past three now, and he promised to be back really quickly. Hello, there's somebody coming now, as he heard footsteps on the ladder that led up through the cloud. Perhaps he's old saucepan, but I can't hear his kettles clanging. Down the ladder came a wooden soldier wearing a red uniform of a guard with a black helmet. He saluted as he went past. Hey! shouted Moonface suddenly. Wait a minute! How is it that you live in the land of goodies? I don't, said the wooden soldier in surprise. I live in the land of toys. What? Is the land of toys up there now? cried Moonface, standing in amazement. Of course, said the soldier. The land of goodies doesn't arrive until next week. Oh, groaned Moonface as the soldier disappeared down the tree. Old Saucepan has made a mistake. He's gone to the land of toys instead of to the land of goodies. I expect he's hunting everywhere for nice things to bring down to us. He's such a silly old man and he wouldn't know if it wasn't the right land. We better go and tell him, said Silky. You children can stay here till we come back and then we'll have a nice feast of pot cakes and google bums. Help yourself to toffee shocks while we're gone. We'll come too, said Beth, jumping up. The land of toys sounds really exciting. I wish I bought my doll. She would love to have visited the land of toys. Is it a dangerous land, said Joe, or just toys coming to life? Of course it's not dangerous, said Silky. They all went up the ladder. They were very anxious to see what the land of toys was like. It was exactly how they imagined it. Dolls' houses, toy shops, toy stations stood about everywhere, but much bigger than real toys. Teddy bears, dolls of all kinds, stuffed animals and clockwork toys ran or walked about talking and laughing. Wow, this is fun, said Beth. Oh, look at those wooden soldiers all walking in a row. They were just like the soldier who'd come down the ladder at the top of the tree. The children stared around. But Moonface beckoned them on. Come on, he said. We've got to find out where old Saucepan Man has got to. I can't see him anywhere. The six of them wandered about the land of toys. Clockwork animals everywhere. A big Noah's Ark suddenly opened its lid and let out lots of wooden animals walking in twos. Noah came behind singing. The Saucepan Man was nowhere to be seen. I'd better ask someone if they've seen him, said Moonface at last. So he stopped a big teddy bear and spoke to him. Have you seen a little man covered with kettles and saucepans, he said. Yes, said the teddy bear at once. He's naughty. He tried to steal some toffee out of the shop over there. I'm sure saucepan wouldn't steal a thing, said Joe angrily. Well, he did, said the teddy bear. I saw him. I know what happened, said Moonface suddenly. Old Saucepan thought he was in the land of goodies. He didn't know it was the land of toys. So when he saw the shop, he thought he could just take as many things as he liked. You can in the land of goodies, you know. And people must have thought he was stealing. Oh dear, said Silky in dismay. Teddy bear, what happened to Saucepan Man? The policeman came up and took him off to jail, said the teddy bear. There's a policeman over there. You can ask him. The teddy bear went off. The children, Moonface and Silky, went over to the policeman. He told them that it was quite true what the teddy bear had said. Saucepan had tried to take the toffee out of the shop and he had been locked up. Oh, we must rescue him at once, said Joe. Where is he? You must certainly not rescue him, said the policeman angrily. I can't tell you where he is. And no matter how much the children begged him, he would not tell them where he had put poor Saucepan. Well, we must go and look for him ourselves, said Joe. And the six of them wandered off through the land of toys, calling loudly as they went. Saucepan! Old Saucepan! 
where are you? And that's the end of that chapter. We're more than halfway through the book now. And the next chapter is called An Exciting Rescue.